Fox 5's Like It or Not, could you get sued just for writing a negative Yelp review? Amanda Knox's public wedding registry and the theme for her big day that's got a lot of people talking. And... Nominations for the VMAs are in, and some fans aren't happy at all. Those stories and more tonight on Fox 5's Like It or Not. Welcome to the show on this Tuesday? It's, it's only Tuesday. It's only Tuesday. It really feels like it's yeah. been a long week so far, right? And like, oh, Lemon, it's Tuesday. How are you? I'm and good. Goff and Guy Lambert here with me. Yes. Not giving me the memo on the uh, on the on the, the brown Ready? and white here. Three, two, one. one. Oh, wrong side. We, we, yeah, that's why we're not. That's we're why we're band. Make the yeah, that's right. That's we're right. I'm still like trying now. to make the band. I need a little help here. <laughs> right. I definitely right. need some help. Got a fourth chair to fill. Let's do it right now. Bring him out, ladies and gentlemen. Our friend John Murray here with us here. Right. Unlike it or not, tonight. Who also did not get the memo? No, I didn't. White. Yeah, I, I didn't get the Ashford and Simpson, Sunny and Cher memo. <laughs> Ashford and Simpson. Oh my you God! Know. You better stop. <laughs> Hey, can I tell you real quick, they, yeah. were, they were playing Hello Heartbreak by Michelle Williams of mm -hmm. Destiny's Child fame when I came out here. Today's her 40th birthday, so happy oh, birthday, yes. Michelle. Happy yeah. Michelle. Yes, yeah, she's in D.C. a lot, right? Friend. Yeah, I've she seen was, her. We were out in NeNe Leakes' MGM store recently. Oh, how fun. That, that is what we call a John Murray name drop here. Oh, oh, my God. God. No. oh sorry. You drop, you do it, man. Listen. You do it. All right, let's drop some truth on you right now. Time to fire it up here on Like It or Not. Have you ever posted a negative review on Yelp, Google, or Facebook? Maybe the business responded with its side of the story. I did that before. Uh, or maybe you tried to make the situation right. But people are starting to get sued over bad reviews. They are called slap lawsuits or strategic lawsuit against public participation. Rather than go on with litigation with the intention of winning, the plaintiffs in slap suits rely on brute force and superior resources to force defendants into retracting their comments. But the suits are starting to get a number, uh, uh, really get traction in a number of jurisdictions. 28 states, including D.C., have anti-slap statutes in their legal codes. Write a bad Yelp review and get slapped. Angie, like it or not? Um, I do not like this at all because we have to evolve with the times. This is not the day and age where you get bad service and we're picking up the phone and we're just yelling at everybody and berating them or demanding that you change or give me a refund. Um, you give bad service, you don't deliver, you're going to be put on blast. And I don't think that there's any way to really bottle that up. And I am totally against any big business trying to to silence a yeah. customer, trying to scare them into silence. And that has been the case in many of these cases. Um, but on the flip side of that, if you are going to make a negative review, you got to have your facts. Back, back it up. Have the receipts. Back it up. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm with you on this. I think that the Cochran firm needs to add a new division that just <laughs> yeah, deals Johnny. with these lawsuits. All those TV lawyers. Yes. It's not an anti-slap division because yeah. this has to stop. Yeah, the truth will set you free. In this case, the truth is going to set you back. I don't like it out one bit, especially for the urban community. You know, when something <laughs> happens in my community, oh, we're really vocal about it. The biscuits are extra crispy at Red Lobster. The, <laughs> the shrimp isn't seasoned. Right. Yeah, that's a yeah, major problem. Not the cheesy biscuits. I, I don't like it, honestly, because this is America. You're supposed to be able to speak freely. Absolutely. Yes. You should be able to do that. But, but doesn't it open itself up sometimes to people posting, as you said, untrue things where you can, mm -hmm. you can, say, you can say at a hotel and say, uh, you know, there was hair in the shower. Uh, there was this. There was that if you don't back it up, and I think sometimes people are going to try to find. I'm not saying that a small, a very small portion of people here mm -hmm. are going to try to put things out there in the hopes of getting something free, trying to yeah. get some some attention for it. And you know, I think businesses have a right to respond. I don't know if it's necessarily the court of law, but. But going so far as to put a clause in there saying that you cannot that's a problem. write anything that's a negative problem. about us, even though we're going to do a service that we have not delivered yet, yeah. I mean, that gives them too much power. Yeah, but what we've learned today is Guy does not like his biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> they are good biscuits, though. Yes, they are. All right, let's move on to who's having the best day ever. Somewhere in the building, Blake McCoy's ears just perked up because he's one of the biggest Taylor fans I've been here. Watching her live stream all afternoon. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Taylor Swift nominated for 10 Video Music Awards. Ariana Grande grabbing two handfuls as well. Billie Eilish getting nine nominations. Lil Nas X with eight. K-pop boy band BTS got four noms, which their fans are mad about, saying four is not enough. Which I believe is what half the number uh, half the number of people who are in BTS. <laughs> it's right. a big group. <laughs> Fans also pointed out how MTV created the best K-pop category this year. One tweet reads: "It's weird to separate K-pop from the rest of the music categories. We're supposed to be breaking barriers and not creating ones at award shows." Let's talk about the VMAs, John. Like it or not? 
listen, the guys were snubbed. They've broken all these records. They've had an epic year. They should be in all the major categories. I don't like the fact that they've separated them. Um, and more so, why does MTV still do the VMAs? They don't even air music videos right. on the network anymore. Yeah. If I was on a game show and the million dollar question was, name one show currently airing on MTV, I would go home a broke man. Mm -hmm. I, I think when you look at the, the VMAs, this used to be a signature. This used yeah. to be the thing that people look forward to. And, and, and I could be wrong here, but the last time they were relevant, at least in my recollection, recollection was the year that Britney kissed oh, uh, Madonna. Yeah. I, I do remember mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I don't know. I'm with John on this one. BTS yeah. got snubbed. That's a bunch of BS, honestly. Yeah. I mean, they had their video come out within 24 hours. What was it? 74, 74 million. million views. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, look at Angie and I. We're not going to even get that on just one view. I know. They were dressed. But I can't wait to hear that duet's record you guys put out. <laughs> oh, no, wait. Well, they're already right? dressed for it. <laughs> but, but I also wonder, with regard to Taylor Swift, if this even excites her anymore. I mean, she's won everything. You yeah. would imagine she would go to the awards, just, eh, another award. Let me just put it on the shelf. I don't know. I think it's really interesting for her. Really? I, I think yeah. that she, she takes a lot of pride in the work that she does, and this is the first time that she's come out and been vocal about her political stance, yeah. you know, in, in putting out, um, I, you want to calm down, or you, you, you ought to calm down, um, and, or you need to calm you, down, <laughs> one of those. You, but you need to calm I, down. So I think that, you know, this is a very well thought out record, mm. and, um, and so I think she, she'll relish in it. Um, being Korean mm -hmm. and having grown up in Seoul and a big fan of BTS, I think the thing that bothers me the most about all of this is that that they created a separate category? Yeah. yeah. K-pop. Like, why would you do that when they do belong in the main categories? That just it doesn't. That's sit what well they with used me. to do to R&B music. Yeah. It does not sit well. Yeah. With me. All right. Let's move on tonight here. Would you dare text an ex right before your wedding? It happened to one woman. It's the talk of Twitter. Producer Jen's in the control room with more on this one tonight. Hello there. Hi, Jim. I have to. I have to call you out for a minute. VMAs. Miley Cyrus and Robin Thicke. Oh, the oh, working incident. Oh, yes. Uh, Got, uh, very, very memorable mm. from, from that year. That's when she was going crazy and sticking her tongue out a million wrecking times. Ball. Mm -hmm, wrecking ball. Um, but yeah, I would agree with you, you know, the VMAs. But anyways, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, we're talking about uh, would you text an ex before your wedding? Would, would you do that? Would your fiance be what cool with say? that? I, I, we're going to find out right after the break. It's called the tease, Jim. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, coming up, yeah, also. He's leaving the room. <laughs> he's done. Also, Amanda Knox is back in the news. There so we'll go. tell you about Bye. this. Where the dungeon goes. Stay with us, guys. Stay with us. Jim, Jim will come back. <laughs> And we are back on Fox Science Looking Out with a woman who's getting her 15 minutes of fame after getting texts from an ex right before the wedding. Uh-huh, that happened. Producer Jen's in the control room with that on it. All right, so, so uh, I, I got, you piqued my interest. That was a tease. That was a good yeah. tease. <laughs> Let me ask the question again. What did they say? So we'll show you a picture of the girl. This girl's name is Alexa Aguilar, and she has gone viral. And what she said was she oh. put all this, she, she put all this on Twitter. Her, her ex, yeah. <laughs> her ex texted Are you her. Her oh, ex texted her right before his wedding and basically just said thank you. They dated a long time ago. He basically said thank you for teaching me how to love and helping me through hard times. He said his fiance was totally cool with him texting her. But she put all this in Twitter and basically said, like, how sweet. And people responded being like, that's not sweet, that's weird. Like, he was about to get married and he texted you. So I'm going to throw it back to you guys. What do you think about that? I just think it's, I'll tell you what the weird part is. The weird part is taking that private conversation yeah. and then tweeting it out. I think that's, I don't because think the problem is with him, the problem is with her. Well, I don't think so. I mean, I think she's moved on. That's weird. I don't think that, so. Really? I, yeah, I like this a lot, honestly. Look, when you, you like in a, a relationship, man? typically it's like, bye, Felicia. I don't want to talk yeah. to you. Yeah. You know, <laughs> seriously. But, uh, and, and Jen just spoke about it. You know, he did reach out to her. A lot of folks might say, hey, he's reaching out for a last minute rendezvous with his ex boo. But I would say, his fiance knows about it. Mm -hmm. You have to look at it and say, a lot of times in a relationship, you leave without saying things that you really want to say. Mm -hmm. And then he said to her, hey, you upgraded me. You Beyonce'd me. And as a result, I think he was a bigger man to tell her that. Guy, I agree with you. I I love this story. I think this is a guy who's been doing self-work. He's probably in counseling. Mm -hmm. um, this is closure. And the fact that his fiance knew he was going to reach out uh, shows that she's very secure in her relationship. Yeah. So I love this. Um, just because two people weren't good together don't mean they're not good people. And if you learn something and you respected the time in a relationship, you can honor that by telling the person thank you. Well, obviously, she put him on blast because things probably did not end well. Yeah. And it was probably his wrongdoing. I'm just assuming this. <laughs> but I mean, I, the last thing I want to hear is like, oh, you made me the person I need to be to be with another woman. You and that's what I get from <laughs> that, that text message. Bye.
All right. Felicia. Hi, <laughs> Felicia. Okay, okay, okay. Bye, boy. Don't forget the Felicia part. All right, the dirtiest beaches in the U.S. Is your beach on the list? Fox Finds Like It or Not coming right back. All right, welcome back to Fox Finds Like It or Not with the controversy at the World Swimming Champions Championships in South Korea. Chinese star Sun Yang won the 400 free. He served a three-month doping ban in 2014, but he's allowed to compete ahead of a court hearing. In an act of protest, Mac Horton of Australia, who came in second to Sun, refused to step on the podium or acknowledge Sun during the medal ceremony. Some are commending Horton's protest. Others say he's a sore loser. Horton's protest guy, like it or not. Dude, grow up. I don't like this not one bit. Seriously, look, there's a time and place for everything. That was not the time to do so. I say that because he had a major accomplishment. He couldn't revel in it because he's too busy being upset about the other guy and him possibly cheating. If he did cheat, it will come to light. Everything in the dark comes to light. Not only that, but he represented his country as well. So mm -hmm. those back at home watching him, wanting to cheer him on on the podium, didn't get a chance to do that as well because, once again, he opted out. I don't like it. Yeah, mm. sour grapes. Yeah, I think so. I, I don't mind it. I really don't because I think that um, we've seen time and time again that athletes are put in positions where they need to stand up for themselves and what they believe in. And they have a history. If you look at these two swimmers, they, they have a history that goes way back. And um, and if you know the whole situation with, with the guy being tested and yeah. all that and what they found, um, I can see, you know, why, you know, you work so hard to get to a point and then you allow someone who allegedly cheated um, rise above you. I, I, I don't know. It doesn't sit. That doesn't sit good. Angie, I'm with you on this one. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Mm -hmm. And this guy had already been suspended once for using a banned substance. When they showed up at his house to test him this time, they kept Looking the people outside. You know, they always say that they show up and test Serena Williams more than any other athlete. Mm -hmm. And you never hear her keeping people on the porch mm -hmm. for an hour and security guards are and getting rid of the samples. To give all of that. Everything. So, yeah, yeah I get yeah, it. Anything. And I would have done the same thing. Probably worse. Yeah, and I think this is a sport of sentence. <laughs> you throw them back in the pool. Oh, first of all, <laughs> just throw them back in the pool. Yeah. Swim like a duck. <laughs> I don't know how you top that. I don't know. That's good. I like that. <laughs> Can I get the gavel? I was inappropriate. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. <laughs> By the way, I like I like John after the first time he did the show, he's whole Instagram pictures with the gavel. I'm thinking, that guy touched my gavel. <laughs> <laughs> How dare he? <laughs> All right, let's move on to ugh, what a day. <laughs> beaches in the US. The new reports is the most troubled beaches in 29 states are among coastal and Great Lakes regions. The study looked at the number of days in 2018 the water had bacteria counts, which are higher than EPA standards. Now, most days, beaches are safe, but researchers found bacteria counts can spike on certain days with fecal matter from people or animals is the main reason. Yuck. Thank you. In Delaware, Slaughter Beach had 16 unsafe days last year. Fenwick Island State Park Beach had three. So did Rehoboth Beach. And in Worcester County, Maryland, Public Landing Beach and Ocean City each had eight unsafe days. But should people freak out about this or should beachgoers not be concerned? Angie, poop in the water. Like uh, it or not. Oh, my goodness. I don't go in the water just because there's jellyfish, but there's this is even more reason. I have little kids, yeah. and so I choose not to think about it. But then when you see stories like this, the fact that there is even an acceptable level of fecal matter, mm -hmm. that that is disturbing. And then I started looking into it even more, and they say that the sand, the sand could have 100 times more fecal matter than oh. what you see a new study came out that then what, what's in the water and this is like runoff and yeah, the, yeah. the dirt the the bird doo-doo and all that stuff i don't know mm. yeah. i mean i don't even know if i can stay at the pool i'm staying inside <laughs> well i think for you know you, you think about, <laughs> i'm not going out people have been going to the, the the beaches for centuries and this was not a problem before but then again you yeah. look at the way that we treat the environment and i know some people don't want to talk yeah. about the way that we handle ourselves when it comes to interacting with the environment but the fact remains that when you have days like this and i agree it's a little weird that there's an acceptable level of fecal matter <laughs> right but regardless i think it only gets worse if you don't take action if you don't look at ways to that, that, that we coexist better with the environment yeah. jim I, I i agree with you i think mother nature hates us um, she's telling us every day, um, <laughs> if it's not the sharks killing us, biting us, yeah. now we got poop in the water. Yeah. Instead of taking a beach blanket, you're going to have to take a hazmat suit to the beach. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm over it. Yeah. I'm with Let's, you. Back, back to the Caribbean. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you got to watch out for a brown torpedo. I mean, I'm not with that at all. Seriously. A floating log. Yeah, seriously. It's a it, shark. No, it's something else. But, but to your point, though, Angie, I think a lot of people, folks are going to say, you know what, I'm not going to swim. But then you have to think about the fish and the fish that mm -hmm. probably ate what I had two days ago based yeah. on my digestive system. Mm -hmm. That's not cool at all. Oh, I'm out. Yeah. Circle all right. of life. Yep. Hope y'all hope y'all enjoyed that one. Uh, <laughs> from beaches to pools, specifically what's gonna be the deepest pool in the world. The pool is opening in Poland this fall, and at its deepest point, deep spot is 148 feet deep. This is a pool. 
and it holds 27, the, uh, 27 times the amount of water of an average pool. Scuba divers can explore overhangs in underwater caves. Non-divers can watch from an underwater tunnel. Deep spot will have conference rooms, training rooms, hotel rooms with underwater views of the pool's interior and an acceptable level of fecal matter in the pool. <laughs> yes, exactly. They all have it. You know, if your eyes turn red, you know it's in there. <laughs> the That's deepest... the truth. I'm telling you, it's the truth. <laughs> The deepest pool in the world, John, like it or not? No, I don't like it. I'm not getting in this pool. But here's the thing. I'm also not going to that conference center and the hotel that they are gonna that they want to build under the pool. Yeah. I've been in enough hotels where people have left the tub running in the room above me and I had to call the engineer. Yep. So imagine you being in the hotel room where you <laughs> look out there and see the pool and all of a sudden you hear the, the, the glass crack. I'm not starring in that Lifetime movie or and if O'Shea Jackson Jr. will not be playing me. That's a disaster waiting to happen. No. Well, no way. I'm with you because Webster's not going to play me either. Uh, <laughs> okay. But I, I, honestly, when I first saw that, I thought that was inside Drake's home. I mean, that is an awesome pool. To a certain extent, yeah. I kind of like it. Just imagine, you go there, you could actually scuba dive in your pool as well. That's really cool. Who's playing Who's playing you in the Lifetime movie? Um, we could have Lucy Liu. <laughs> okay. Joanna Gaines. I don't know who else. Okay, I like that. I don't know. Selma Hayek. So, okay, okay, I'll take that. Yeah. I'll take that. Um, I like the pool. Okay. I'd go. Good. Who's uh, in your movie, Jim? <laughs> uh, we gotta go. We gotta move on here. Amanda Knox, remember her? She's getting married in the theme for her big day and the wedding registry making headlines. We'll talk about that after the break. I'll think about that. <laughs> I'll think about that. We're back on Fox 5's Like It or Not with Amanda Knox, who's back in the news four years after she was acquitted of being convicted of when she was acquitted of murder. The now 31 year old is getting married and she's not asking for gifts, but for people going to the wedding and those not going to help pay for the big day. There's a wedding registry available online, and you can donate anywhere from $25 to $10,000. The theme for the occasion appears to be space and time travel. The registry says there's going to be props, costumes, puzzles, and riddles. It sounds like something that Angie would do, so that's why we're going <laughs> to yes. ask her. Help pay for the big day. Angie, you like it or not? Oh. I mean, the, the, the puzzles and games, that sort of thing. I feel like... And costumes. Yeah, yeah yes, that. Lots yes. of costumes. Yeah. Uh, but I wouldn't ask you or you or you to pay for Thank it. Thank you. I am offering for free... Amanda Knox, if you're watching this, to be your wedding planner. And the first thing we're going to book is City Hall. I'm going to take you down there. You're going to get married, and then we're done. You don't owe me a dime. And I think it's absolutely ludicrous that she would ask perfect strangers to pay for this. I mean, it, I, it blew my mind. I thought it was a joke yeah, when I first saw it. Go kick rocks. That's what I thought. I'm with you. you yeah. know, I, I sat there, and I read the story, and then I read it again. First of all, I don't know you, and this has nothing to do with what happened in the past. That's your mm -hmm. business. Whatever happened, happened. But to ask a perfect stranger for me to pay for your wedding, and I'm not even invited? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. Listen, I'm not running for president, but if I was joining everybody else that was, one of the campaign promises that I'd have would be to get rid of GoFundMe. It could only be used Thank you. for death, for yeah. medical emergencies and natural disasters. Mm -hmm. I'm not putting your children through the cheerleading camp. I'm not doing your CD that you always <laughs> dreamed of. Uh -huh. I'm not taking on a part-time job so you can not live your best house. life. Ain't gonna I'm happen. It needs to end. Mm -hmm. I'm John Murray and I approve of this message. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I don't think we're gonna be going to the wedding. <laughs> Thank you. Thank no, you. Thank no, you. no autographs, no autographs. <laughs> don't, don't look me in the eyes as I walk out. <laughs> oh, thank, you, thank, you, thank you, thank you. All right. Uh, okay. I think it's time for Loke's last word. Let's do that right now okay. and tell you what's on my mind tonight. Uh, so here's the deal. If someone handed you $5 on the street, you'd take it, right? Mm -hmm. Of course you would. But what if in return they ask you to submit to a face scan on the spot? ZD Scan. ZD Net says Google is doing that right now in some cities, deploying teams to go out and do face scans, presumably as part of an effort to perfect its own face ID technology on smartphones. In exchange, you get a $5, $5 Starbucks or Amazon gift card. Companies are doing this sort of thing everywhere, and one would guess people, uh, they're hoping that people would skip the fine print, see the dollar signs in their eyes, and submit to it. Whatever. We live in a surveillance state already. We know that, right? We're being recorded everywhere. We have no reasonable expectation for pri privacy in a public place. But between that and Amazon's offer for $10 in exchange for access to your browsing history, you gotta wonder, what's the price of our privacy? What's the price you would pay to give up privacy? And, and I would hope for you, and I hope you would think too, that it would be far more than a $5 Starbucks gift card. And that's my last word tonight. Tell them, Jen. You wouldn't do that. Depends how thirsty you were. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. And I wouldn't do it. At Starbucks, you can't even get the secret menu Trenta size drink. Like, I can't even afford the size of the drink that I want with a five. With a five dollar yeah. money to your gift card. Well, then you tell them to do two scans. Yeah. No, I'm good. Yeah. No. Profile. Yeah, no.
Privacy is priceless. I mean, yeah. honestly, you know, you don't want people all up in your business and only five dollars, as you stated. No, nah, I'll pass. Now, a twenty dollar Chick Fil A card. Oh. Like, he's in on that. He's in on that. I think when you have, uh, you know, especially with our phones. I mean, you have the face scan technology. I was actually just trying to scan your face to find out who will play you. And oh, you're doing that? Yes. Okay. Keep talking. You can, I'll keep talking. You can do that. Uh, so you have that. You have the, the the fingerprint scan. I know a lot of people are a little, you know, skeeved out by by what. Can happen yeah. with your information out there. So. I got it, Angie. Yes. Turtle. This from Entourage. Turtle from Entourage. I was thinking Entourage. Entourage. Yes. Entourage. Yes. Yes. Uh, Some people have said that. Wait, uh, my question. People have said that. My my turtle. response is. Real name. Fat turtle or skinny turtle? Jerry Ferrara. <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> None of you answer that question. Skinny turtle. Skinny Thank you. Turtle. I said skinny. Tell people where they yes. can find you, John. Uh, J A W N Murray is the last name. Hit me up on all social media. And you can find Jim on Entourage. At Guy Lambert News with a Z. Yeah. Uh -huh. And us always on Fox Five. If I'm still here tomorrow. <laughs>